Welcome to this week's edition of the Football Fan Show podcast. Thank you uh, so much for joining us. Callum Brown is back for a second week in a row. What is coming up on today's edition of the podcast? This week's edition of the podcast includes a little bit more on the European Super League, where we had a special edition of the podcast, which you can go listen to now with Thomas Moore, where you can hear our opinions. That was recorded Monday, as the new, day after the news broke, before the team started pulling out of it. Uh, we're talking about the European Super League a little bit more uh, we're going to look at the Champions League reform, the 50 plus one rule in Germany as well. Um, we, we've got a story about how it's worked, how it hasn't worked. Uh, but as I say, as I mentioned, we'll talk about the Champions League reform. I don't like it. I think it's terrible. 36 clubs participating. We'll tell you about the format and how it essentially, well, players are just pieces of meat designed to make money for already very wealthy people. Chat about Jose Mourinho, because nobody's been talking about him uh, this week with all the European Super League stuff. He was sacked on Monday from his job at Tottenham, being linked with two other brand new jobs, neither of which I don't think he'll get. Explain more in a bit. Callum Brown is my guest, and thank you so much for tuning in to this week's podcast. We start just after I had had a rant about... uh, my hometown football club being absolutely crap. Swindon Town Football Club, they lost 5-0 to MK Dons. And if you want to see a video of me crying into a scarf, you need to go to tiktok.com forward slash at the football fan show where you can see me break down crying because they're 4-0 down. They eventually lost 5-0 and yes, they were relegated. So after I got a little bit of sympathy from my friend, a.k.a. he laughed... <laughs> at me for maybe a good five minutes i may may be exaggerating but it gave him a a little bit of comic satisfaction my utter misery at my team getting relegated we start with the european super league right the super league then we talked about this on monday in a one hour live special we talked about it and uh, i just thought we'd spend just a few minutes talking about getting Callum's reaction to this. You were a fan of Liverpool. Uh, uh, You were a fan. You are a fan of Liverpool, I should say. But uh, not not happy with the... uh, with the lack of competition in the European Super League. You, You didn't... You don't... You don't fancy... Your club doesn't fancy playing your Burnleys, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Crystal well, Palace. It wants to play Real Madrid every every Sunday. Well, as, as I point out, it's not the, the club that doesn't want to play against. Well, it's the owners. It's, 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 it's Fenway Sports Group. Owners. Yeah. It's Fenway Sports purely, Group. It's purely John W. Henry as the principal owner who made the conscious choice to go, well, there's no money to be made in playing Burnley every week. And he's got he's got Florentino Perez, you know, whispering in his ear, you know, come with me, come with me, seductive like, you know, as, as seductive as an old man can be. You know um, what? No, 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 no. Let, 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 let me stop you there. This is what Florentino... Perez, join the dark side of the force. Literally, literally <laughs> all you used to do is put, just put a hood on Valentino Perez, and he would literally be Emperor Palpatine, literally, because he's, 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 you know, because he, even now, after all the English teams left, he's still sitting there going, hmm, they have signed a binding contract. They, they have signed a now. binding contract. I'm going to send <laughs> Lord Vader to force them back into the Super League. I'm, I'm going to send Lord Vader, who is um, like Juventus' owner or something, Lord Vader. Andrea and Agnelli. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I'm going um, to send Andrea in to get you to and then Joel Glazer, yes. Mm. I mean, Joel, I don't, no question even asked about Joel Glazer, but yeah, basically what they wanted is they wanted... Um, all the money to be kept themselves. They don't like the money trickling down to the lower leagues. But then Florentino Perez come like, well, we're doing this to help other teams because no, if we not. have more money, then that means we buy their players off them, which means they have more money. I mean, hang on. Let me let me let me let me say this about the uh, European Super League. Obviously, we've had the dominoes and falling, and you can go see the uh, the the one hour special, which is available on our YouTube channel. Also on this Twitch channel, as well as uh, on Instagram Live, uh, Facebook, and uh, Twitter as well. Uh, that's going to stay there permanently, by the way. We're not getting rid of that. That's staying. There. It it will disappear from Twitch because that's what Twitch does, but it will remain permanently on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, and Instagram Live because it it, it was a, a, a just a cluster. Travesty. Of... 
different yeah it, i like i'm yeah. not gonna forget about it um yeah, a cluster but, B. Yeah, I yeah, to be cluster B. Um, <laughs> An absolute um, cluster fudge of of yeah, fudge, different yeah, opinions. Of... And uh, what I will say is that really different uh, opinions. It was it was the overlords. Uh, you know, it was the. Um, I was talking the, about the different opinions of the uh, of the clubs. Come uh, nine, what was it? Ten o'clock uh, on a Monday for, or Tuesday, forty eight hours afterwards, yeah. where they're like, uh, Chelsea were like, yeah. Uh, getting a bit too uh spicy for the pepper in this kitchen i think we're gonna leave the collar yeah yeah Yeah. and then man city went i mean if they're out we're out (laughs) we like so the, the, the 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 this has been reported that chelsea and man city were the last as well as uh atleti as well in madrid they were one of the they were three of the last clubs to sign up to this and the opinion was at chelsea and man city is if the big clubs leave then we're just going to play each other all the time, and that's not really going to help us. So we might as well sign up to yeah. it. Which so uh, we, ridiculous. Yeah, it's 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 all this. It's just like oh well, we need to make money. Like if it was up to Florentino Perez, if it was up, if it was up to these owners, you'd have these the teams that were signed up for it. So say for example, we'll use my club. We'll, we'll have Liverpool playing Barcelona in, in Atlanta on a Monday night in front of you know empty stadium, yeah. and then Thursday night. Liverpool playing Real Madrid in Shanghai. Yeah, that's how we would have they it. Want, they want, they want no one, no worldwide clubs. No, no Liverpool fan about. is going to those matches. Thing is, it's not just about Liverpool, but all the English clubs, right? All fans are fans. So whether you watch casually or whether you are a diehard season ticket owner for forty years, and you're going to the match every week to the stadium, a fan is a fan. Your value is the same. Because you matter. These Le- owners, legacy fans don't matter. That's what we've learned. Well, about this that's week. the thing. Legacy owners. Well, the fact legacy that the fans, owners have said the legacy don't fans matter. don't matter because we don't care about that pay, that old management run coming since he was six years old. You don't give us enough money. Mer- he, just, he doesn't buy the shirts. He doesn't buy the merchandise. You don't make he his money. <laughs> he, he doesn't. Okay, yeah, he buys a cup of tea from the club cafe. You know, but yeah, for like sixty. Yeah, doesn't do. Um, doesn't we don't we don't get any more money off him? They want all the kids from Japan who are gonna go to the the LFC Japan shop and buy every kit, every piece of merchandise and memorabilia that they can, because mm-hmm. that's where all the money comes in, and that's what the clubs of every owners, the, the fans and. The fans of every club united because at this point is that you are throwing away, particularly for the clubs like Liverpool, Manchester United, Arsenal, who have a rich history. You know, Man- of course, Manchester United, Man City, and Tottenham and Chelsea, well, particularly Man-, Man City and Chelsea, they're new money. They have a history of their own, but they're more new money. Mm. But particularly Liverpool, Manchester United, and Arsenal, who were built by working class people, you know, whether it would be, you know, dockers or miners or any kind of low class people who came together to make a club. Mm. And the whole history and I mean the thoughts of even, you know, I don't know who it was that came out and was like, yeah, if they join this then their like league titles or their their European cups get converted to European these this super league trophies. Yeah. The J.P. Morgan like, Trophy. <laughs> it's like it's like how dare you! Like you want to throw away the whole history of the club, and and to be honest, for hit for me, and I'm, I'm sure saying for the the pool clubs that, um, Bill, you know, um, from Bill Shankly, don't you? Built our club up, gave the foundations of what it is today. His grandson, you know, he has a, a statue outside our stadium. Yes, he does, and yes, I saw and what you were about to talk. His about, grandson, yes. his grandson came out and threatened to have it removed. Because of the, basically, he said his grandfather would be ashamed and disgusted. And like every any Liverpool fan looks at that and goes, "Jesus Christ, Bill Shankly made us who we are," and these owners are trying to destroy, destroy that legacy. Mm. Same with um, same with Matt Busby at uh, yeah, Manchester Matt United. Busby, he, he famously said, didn't he, about the fans? It is all about yeah, fo- you know yeah, football is nothing without fans. Bill Shankly always said. You you are you, you know you honor the fans in the city by representing them, 
you play for them, you fight for them, it, you know. And their owners, I mean, bloody hell, the the Glazers came in and bought it cheap, and they've been sponging money for years. That's it's no surprise. Yeah, they, from they, them. they 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 just bought Manchester United as a piggy bank. Yeah, yeah, they they just don't care. They don't care. Whereas our owners, our owners, you know, but yeah, you go to Anfield and literally on the front of the stadium it says, you know, this means more. But the yeah. fans and clubs, you know, you'll never walk alone. You've got you've got people like spitting on our cl- clubs, you know, slogan. Yeah, um, because yeah, Gary Neville it's... was particularly uh, vocal about that, saying, well, you know, it's the people's club. I know he, he did have a go at Manchester United as well. I will point yeah, that out. Yeah, but because uh, everyone, all the Liverpool, <laughs> Jurgen Klopp had a go at Gary yeah. Neville, and he's like, I've had a yeah. go at Manchester United as well. It's not just Liverpool. Yeah. Um, yeah. and he did. To be fair, if you watched well, on Sun- said... last Sunday. He had a go at yeah, Manchester United. Said he, I was glad he had a go at both because he said, "Look, he said, he said, forget Man City and Chelsea and all that." But he said, "Liverpool, Man United, them being the two front runners trying to spearhead this." He said, "Feels most ashamed than them two because he gets it because both clubs are very similar mm. in in that sense." And he Stature, gets that. history, yeah, yeah, he gets he gets it, mm. and, and yeah, it, it's 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 all just it literally. Trying to throw everything the clubs, you know, throw away its 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 pride, its integrity, all to, to get some money. Like the like they bought the club for what was it two hundred million? Yeah, they bought it for ago. a steal, as as uh, Jamie yeah. uh, Jamie Carragher pointed out on the Monday night. Yeah, me. Hicks and Gillette runners into the ground, so we got saved by FSG. And they bought it for like two hundred million. The club's worth like well over two point eight billion. Yeah. They've made so money, billion, almost, three, almost three billion it's worth now. Yeah. And they still want more money more because money. not just about one billion, it's about two billion or three billion. When you got that, they want four billion. It's you know that's how much money they've got, it's always like what we want more. So it feels like they've just been trying to like sugarcoat it, like like, like sugarcoat it with, with nice pretty words of oh, we care about the city, we care about the, the club, we care about the fans. And then now this just revealed their true the true colours. And there's been a, a percentage of fans, no matter you know the success we've had over the past couple of years, there's still been a small minority of fans who still wanted FSG out. This, all this has done now, is lost the, the complete trust. The the bridge that was there between the, the owners and the fans has been destroyed. Uh, yeah, we ran a poll. One hundred percent said uh, they wanted FSG out of Liverpool. Um, yeah, I mean. What what happened with us is that you seen that um, the clubs came out and do like a statement on their website. Each of the clubs was like an well, Arsenal ones on an apology. Man United didn't really do anything. Ours was like a ours was pathetic. Little short statements going. Oh, we decided not to be pumped part of it. You know, we've had meetings with stakeholders in the last couple of days and we thank them. No apology. No one's name on it. And the next day, so we all like Jesus Christ, that's pathetic. What are they doing? That, you know, they don't care that we're incensed about mm. this. And then, you know, fair play to him. Next day, John W. Henry came out in front of a camera and he said, Apologized, and, and he yeah. basically took it all onto himself on his shoulders. And he said, you know, he apologized numerous times. And people said, oh, you can see, because he's wearing glasses, you, people said, oh, you can see a screen with a script on it. I mean, yeah, well, it probably was, someone probably wrote it for him. Yeah, guaranteed. But, I don't think that removes any of the sincerity. I think he honestly does care, but I'm... it's the fact that it's the fact the way all the clubs have gone about it. I'm... They've sneakily gone behind the players' backs, the managers' mm. backs, the, the fans. No consultation to anyone, and they've just, gone, "Yeah, we're doing gone, this." Yeah, we're and doing then this. So, somehow the reaction surprises them, and they've all backpedaled. I'm like, they should like how many like. You probably have like economical and you know financial experts coming and saying, right, this would be the five year plan if we must join this super league, this is gonna be this figure and that figure. But surely some kind of PR person was there going, Hey this is guys, a terrible idea. You do realise that us spit in the face of fans not really gonna be happy with this, you know. Not one I person mean, came obviously it, popped up and then once it's actually gone so once it's actually been announced it's out there, they're like, Oh, well, we're now getting threats by every single part of our fan base. We didn't see this coming. Yeah. Um... I mean, to be honest, I think now I think I think that the damage has been done, but I think no matter how much I see Liverpool fans on Twitter come, you know, scream for their heads, if they don't want to sell, they don't have to sell. 
No, so they hold the keys. Uh, we're seeing this with the um, mirror. With Kronke the mirror, and they have, they have uh, already, Blazers. They have already, um, done, you know, uh, rebuffed uh, an offer of like three billion from some Middle Eastern group. So they don't want to sell. They don't have to. What they need to do now is just remain quiet and just back Jengkloff, back Michael Edwards in getting the players in to make us successful again. Hmm. So it won't, it won't make us forget. It's, it's like quoting it, you know, um, forgive but never forget. No. Yeah. So yeah, I think we forgive the fact that they've come out of it now. They've realised the mistake. But we'll never forget that that, tr- that that bridge they have with us, that level of trust that they had and goodwill has been irreparably like yeah. fractured and broken. Also, so. uh, what I would also like to add to this one, all the English clubs came out before all the Spanish ones. Uh, we covered this on Monday, so I'm not going to... This is where we're going to end it. Um, I will just say that, um, you know, these are, are six big clubs. And I want to bring in something that John Barnes said... And everyone, all week, there's been this perpetual story from whether it's BBC, ITV, Sport, Sky, BT, that this is a victory for fans. This is not a victory for fans. It's the victory for the status quo. A victory for the fans is kicking out the bloody Americans, kicking out the Glazers, kicking out Stan Kroenke, kicking out um, FSG. That's... Victory for the fans because we have terrible owners in this country. Lee Power at Swindon, for God's sakes. There's so many yeah. terrible owners in this country. A victory for the fans is either 50 plus one or fan representatives on the board. It's it's an well, absolute disgrace. Yeah, well, what, what, what this has proven, right, is that when fans truly stand together, then you know, we, we can win against these tyrannical owners. But you know what this proves to me? I was looking at this going, Jesus Christ, you know, look at the reaction of this. And we got it over the same within 48 hours. What about, you know, Black Lives Matter and, and you know, and all that and the racism thing? Like, that's been going on for ages. Not really, not really has happened. What, what's this show that fans aren't really united on it? Because if they truly were, like with this European Super League issue, we would have got something, there would have been some action ages ago with it. Well, as um, as Patrick Bamford said for for Leeds, if if it was hurting somebody's pocket, then they'd have done something about it. But it's not. Well, so. that's, that's it, isn't it? It's not to do. It's with all money. about money, it's do, and it's it's, do, a, it's, it's a disgrace. With, it's not to do with money. It's to do with respect. It's to do with basic human rights. It's to do with you know togetherness as a sport. But these the clubs aren't community weapons, assets like, anymore. I'm sorry if anyone views them as community assets. You're 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 mistaken whether yeah. you're in the Premier League whether you're in the uh, Ryman League they're not community assets anymore they're 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 there to make people money and yes. sometimes you get vultures coming into lower league clubs buying them thinking oh I'm going to make a quick buck in this and then it uh, it's a uh, backfire spectacularly highly power um but uh yeah these are not community assets anymore if you think I, I, I'm with John Barnes on this if you think this is a victory for fans you're you're deluding yourself and you're fooling yourself this is not a victory for fans this is a victory for the status quo this is a victory for billionaires uh, yeah. the only way that that this will ever be a victory for fans is if we actually kick the billionaires out of the premier yeah, league that, that's what i seen i said should, this this can't stop now like we yet yeah, we've we've sort of gone back to we've stopped the change that that shouldn't that couldn't have happened and we've gone back to how things were as you said the status quo now the fight has got to be taken back to them now because if Absolutely. it stops they win got to keep on fighting um i i just i i just i love john barnes he's just one of my favorite oh, yeah. people he's he yeah. speak he speaks the god's honest truth and i love him i love yeah. him for it and uh, it's it's he's just great um let's so we, we're just approaching fast approaching uh two o'clock with 10 seconds uh to go we will talk about the chat the the ridiculous ridiculous champions league reforms i did forget to put that in the title but we will kind of talk about that because it is ridiculous it it's 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 stupid stupid but a lot to cram in in the next hour 50 plus one rule then Let's have a look at it. Uh, Bundesliga, German clubs have this. It 
works, but it doesn't work. It's kind of the best of the bad situation that we've got in England. Uh, I think a lot of German fans look at our system and go, we'd rather own our clubs rather than uh, than um, have foreign foreign states and foreign entities buy our clubs that don't understand the culture. Because no one's going to understand the, the culture of Bavarian football with Bayern Munich in 1860. No one's going to understand the culture. It's very unique to that part of the world. Like the... The, the fans of, of Dortmund are very and Schalke are very unique to that part of Germany. Like Germany has is a melting pot of different Germanic cultures. So but mm-hmm. ve- what we kind of think with the Lederhosen and, and the beer and the, the, the sausages and things like that, that's more Bavaria than, than the rest of Bavarian, Germany. Yeah. That is very much uh, that is yeah. Bavaria. That's, not yeah, the rest that's of why Germany. that's why whenever that that time of year, October first, you only that, ever see Bayern Munich players doing yeah. it, pictures of them. Never see any yeah. other team doing it. Yeah, because it's it's very much Bavarian. Oktoberfest yeah. is Bavarian. It's it's not German. It's Bavarian, and uh, they l- very much like to point I that mean, out. As yeah, as a Bavarian probably... football club fan, you know. Yeah, yeah, but there's probably other there's people. Oh yeah, other parts of Germany or say parts. Oh, yeah. It's just an excuse to get drunk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, just English people. Hey, we've beer. adopted it now. English people use it as okay. an excuse. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, the 50 plus one rule, what is it? Uh, well, the 50 plus one rule, in, in short, guards against uh, takeovers from foreign entities and investors. Uh, it means that essentially that, that fans don't, it's not about ownership, it's voting rights. So they will always have f- half the voting rights plus one. So they will. The fans will always it's have a majority 51, control. Yeah. They all have the majority control. They yeah. all have the majority control, and the fans. It, it is set as a rule under the DFL, the German Football League, and uh, uh, commercial investors have no more than a forty-nine percent stake yeah. in terms of voting rights. Yeah. Well, now when I would, oh, oh go on. I was just going to say when I when I look at the German model, I, I look at Bayern Munich as the example. You know where what's what's the the guy's name called. Karl Heinz Rummenigge. Yeah. yeah, so he's he's the CEO, isn't he? And he's on the the buying board. And I was thinking, well, I was saying to my mum's dad, no matter what they decide, what they want to do with the club, they always have to put it to the the fan vote. And it, at the end of the day, it comes down to what they want. So any kind of direction they want to go in, I mean, look look how big they are, look how big and successful they are. And it it, it yeah, as you said, there's problems with the fifty plus one rule, but. What? I was just about to go, um, uh, go into those problems, including uh, a, a club called, I don't know if you've heard of them, a Rasen Bull Sport Leipzig. Sounding a lot <laughs> like a, an energy drinks company, but they can't have anything to do with it. There's no commercial ownership in, in the Bundesliga. So you want to know how they get around that rule? They <laughs> So RB Leipzig insist, Rasen Bull Sport Leipzig insist that they are a member-owned club. The member, the membership, though, thousands of euros and exclusively held by workers at red bull so <laughs> <laughs> well the, your fans aren't the uh, i mean know. i mean red bull are fans of of leipzig i guess but uh rouse and yeah. bull sport Leipzig. same with hoffenheim it's uh it's owned by pretty much one guy it was a, effect, effectively a village team and um and it, team. It, well no it, it effectively was if you look at the history of Hoffenheim they're no different to say a Forest Green Rovers in terms of their oh, yeah, because, oh, where yeah. they're based and yeah. um they got taken over by a billionaire who decided to um essentially he doesn't own the voting rights but the the people that do tend to vote his way uh yeah. where this has gone wrong also I will point out the lovely and tragic story of the greatest club in Germany 1860 München uh, who <laughs> are now in the third division of German football. The 50 plus one rule is, is um, well, didn't exactly help them because they had a, a, a investor come in who bought the 49% stake and then increased that stake, the ownership of the club, to 60%. However, just because they own 60% of the club does not mean they get the 50 plus one voting rights. They do not. They had to sacrifice their voting rights for ownership. So they own 60% of the club, but the fans still have control. The fans still 
still have a vote. Now, I will say there are the, the, the downfall of 1860 Munich is not just because of the 50 plus one rule. Uh, it's because they decided to build a massive stadium called the Allianz Arena with uh, Bayern Munich, even, <laughs> though, even though they could never hope to sell it out and they were quickly relegated to the second division, uh, the Bundesliga 2, and then having to sell their stake in the Allianz to Bayern Munich. Um, but... It... <laughs> If English football, and it won't go down the 50 plus one rule route because it can't, it just can't without government intervention. And, and let's face it, the government's not going to do anything. Um, if it did, you'd be you'd be kissing goodbye to the multi-million pound transfers, the hyperinflated wages that, um, thank you, Real Madrid, for that. And you wonder why you're two billion quid in debt. Um the so yeah you'd have to we we have quite a toxic relationship with the trans with trans with the uh, transfer system in this country because we make a big song and dance of it and it, even we have like Jim White in his lovely gold yellowy tie sit on one day on Sky Sports News that dominates dominates that channel it's transfer deadline day they always have the little counter who's your club mm-hmm. gonna sign. Are they going to sign this guy for 100 million quid or this guy for 70 million pounds or, or something like that? And, uh, and, uh, just... yeah, cause it's, cause it's big, it's big and exciting, isn't it? That's when clubs want to see big, big, big names move into their clubs. But it's, but um... if you have the 50 plus one rule, you have to say goodbye to that. Yeah. Because you aren't I mean... going to spend that. So you either, you either have to get you, yourself away from the toxicity of transfers and transfer deadline day and the the club spending hundreds of millions of pounds because those are only available to clubs that have foreign investors. And if you have yeah. 50 plus one, that goes away. So you either have that and you have that excitement or you have the fans in control. So yeah, it's, that, that, it's that's one what of you've got the to compare two. To the side. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I know about my club is that the, there's a supporters group, you know, you have, um, you have like Spirit Shankly and you have like Spy on Cop and that. And they've written an open letter. They all come together, written an open letter. I don't think they've called specifically for the 50 plus one rule, but they have definitely called for fan representation on the mm. board, amongst other things. That's so, a compromise. Uh, Supporters think, trust I, positions on board, on the boards. Yeah, because to be honest, I think like, everyone, everyone wants to get the best players in, even the fans. So. I just think the fans want just to have a little bit more say and what, and just have a voice on the board. You know, let the board do what they want with the club still, as long as it, you know the betterment of the club. And include, but just include the fans a bit more, a bit more communication, a bit more transparency. What's going on? Because unless they come out and specifically, at the moment, the status quo is unless they specifically come out and tell tell us anything, we don't know what's happening. So, I think they're happy for the clubs are still doing what they need to do. Because we're we're to be honest, we're a well run club. You know, it's 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 one of those business models where you spend what you make. We mm. make a lot of money, so we spend a lot of money. Not as much as other clubs. But no. it's it's a well run club. I would Obviously, also say with the fifty plus one rule, I think the the um if you're ever expecting with a 50 plus one rule, somebody like a Leicester City to win the Premier League, that's out the window because it, it would just be Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal. It would be the big clubs because they would have the most amount of membership and would be able to raise the most amount of capital. Um, so that's why you get yeah. Bayern, Dortmund. OK, Hamburg's a bad example because they're crap. But um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's why you get Bayern dominating uh, quite a lot yeah. and why you get Dortmund as the second second best team um so yeah you'd have to accept that manchester united and liverpool maybe arsenal to a lesser degree it would be manchester united and liverpool fighting does, it out does that mean the... does that mean man city and bottom i mean do they have as many supporters globally as manchester united no do they have as many supporters well, as manchester there's united of, there's no. lots of clubs in the premier league who probably have more worldwide supporters than man city exactly so if you if those worldwide supporters can pay for a membership, then that raises capital for the club, okay. and therefore you're going to have a bigger pot to to spend. Uh, but Manchester United are clearly going to have the biggest. Maybe Liverpool just slightly smaller than that, but still 
the, the second biggest in the Premier League, or, or if not joint biggest, and then Arsenal probably third in in that because yeah. Um, but I, I would say the top three would probably have the 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 difference between the three budgets would be minute, so they would be yeah. spending similar amounts of money. But I, I wouldn't say maybe Tottenham would be up there um, somehow. But uh, 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 depends who's who's marketed themselves well. Who has marketed themselves? And Newcastle would be absolutely screwed because they have not marketed themselves well to an international no. audience, even though they are the type of club that would do incredibly well on an international yeah. audience because they have that yeah. prestige and history and they are, despite yeah. their struggles, a quite big club, like yeah. like big to a degree of Aston Villa and, and Leeds. Like they're a, yeah. they're a decent sized, well-supported club. And I'm not talking they, about they, big they, six. They loyal fans. Yeah. yeah. I would I would even hesitate to say that to suggest that maybe even uh, Newcastle are bigger than Tottenham. Um what was that? Um anyway, that's a fifty plus one rule in about ten minutes. So uh going back to the uh, Super League, I just want to say that uh, I wanted to focus on a different angle here and not the uh, Premier League clubs and not the ownership. I want to talk about Barcelona and I want to talk about Real Madrid. Uh this is a Hail Mary approach from uh, Fiorentino Perez who we have described as Darth Sidious a little bit earlier. Good, let the Super League flow through you. Um, I want to say that this is a Hail Mary from them. They know that, that quite frankly, they're not going to make the money that they need to survive in, in La Liga. I always thought that, and I pointed this out on Monday, it's stupid for the English team to join them because they'd be at a financial disadvantage purely because they'd be making less money because they'd make more money as a part of the Premier League. Whereas Real Madrid, why would you want to give them equal parity? Why would you want to give a club like Barcelona and Real Madrid equal parity in terms of finances? They already get less money in their national division. You know, well, I heard somewhere, I might be wrong, but you know how the the clubs are going to get like a, just for signing up, like a, a bonus, you know, 400 million or something. Mm. Um, apparently... Barcelona and Real were going to get a much higher bonus. Of course they were. Of course they were. Because you know, they need yeah. it. Because they're in debt. They're yeah. in two billion euros worth of debt each. Um, quite frankly, if Real Madrid and Barcelona were to hit hit the wall, I would not shed a tear. I, I Real Madrid are at the. This is their own fault. They have been hyperinflating transfers, wages. Barcelona both, as well, to a lesser much. degree. Yeah. But um, yeah, same. Both teams have been hyperinflating transfer fees and wages for far too long. Quite frankly, if Real Madrid and Barcelona both hit the wall, I would love to see AFC Real Madrid in the amateur divisions playing at the Bernabeu Stadium, which will probably be demolished and turned into an Aldi supermarket. Um, we, could, we can't do that. It's already getting renovated know, know. at the moment. I know. <laughs> I, know. I know. I'm just exa- I'm just being it's a... Just half a, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the, 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 the the building manager comes and goes all right lads hi drop, mr topic drop somewhere we, we, money's run out <laughs> money's run out. out we've we've gone bankrupt yeah. um yeah. And by the way this will never happen because real madrid and barcelona will both get bailed out by the spanish government oh, i yeah. am 100 percent convinced they're too big not to be bailed out yeah they're too big not to be bailed out like it, it would be a disaster for spanish football it would be an absolute Spanish disaster. Economy. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, and we've already seen that even though Barcelona like to think the Spanish league is against them because they're Catalonian, when it came to Lionel Messi staying at the club, the La Liga were their, were their lapdog in that. So actually, Barcelona cannot say that you know, the Spanish system is against them because it's absolutely rigged in their favour, as well as Real Madrid. Maybe more so to Real Madrid. What's but... I mean? Like, well, that's what I mean. Talking about Messi, what's going to happen to him now? It's... Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, he's like, apparently in, 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 in a contract talks, in the contract negotiations with Barcelona about a new deal. Where are they going to get the money from? Exactly. Exactly. You know what? Step one, get rid of Messi. He earns way too much money. That's what I mean. It's like a million he's, pounds he's a week. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. But you can't afford him. <laughs> you simple. can't afford him anymore. You can't afford him anymore. You, it's like, I mean, why have you got Gareth Bale at Real Madrid playing bloody golf? You need to get rid of him. It'd be yeah. cheaper to terminate his contract at this point. Yeah. He's only got a year left on it, so you might as well terminate his contract a year early like uh, Arsenal did with uh, Meza Ertzel. Yeah. Anyway, uh, ending our chat on the European Super League. Once again, Mr. Topic underscore hello to you. Uh, we end with uh, Champions League sponsors Heineken saying don't drink and start a start a league. Enjoy Heineken responsibly. 
proud sponsors of the UEFA <laughs> Champions League. Don't drink and start a league. That is uh, is 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 the message here. I, my 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 quiet, well done clap to Anakin there. I saw that and. Uh, uh, right, where do we go here? Well, let's then. let's let's talk about the ridiculous reforms to the uh, Champions League, uh, which is utter bull, utter utter bull. I hate these reforms, one hundred percent. And go to one at Man City. Uh, Ike Good one tweeted out saying that no one cares about the players. It's more games, more games, more games. So. What is it? What is this new, reformed, revamped Champions League that is so ridiculously stupid that even Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich are actually against it? <laughs> well, well, they're fans. Uh, Mr. Topic, you just you just missed us. You just missed us talking about the fifty plus one rule. You you literally just missed us. Go back if you can. When you when this is over, go back if you can. We spent about a good ten minutes talking about a fifty plus one rule and about uh, Leipzig. Uh, Hoffenheim, 1860, uh, Bayern, and and how that would affect the English league. So can't go back to that topic. We've already talked about it. Uh, but let's talk about this new 36 team Champions League. It's been agreed to, um, including these the 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 12 English teams. Eventually, uh, oh, of course. Uh, they were well, they agreed to it beforehand. They agreed to it years ago. So when it was proposed, like two years ago, so they agreed to it then. But uh, Due to start in 2024 and to run at least till 2033, the new Champions League, the 36... I mean, Mr. Topic does point out that the 36-team Champions League is, is better than the European Super League. I agree with him there. In fact, actually, can I just go back to the Super League and say there is only one thing, one thing that would have made me sign up to the Super League is if they'd called it the Joy Division. And that is my only joke... I'm going to make. If they'd called it the Joy Division, then I'd be in, I'd be like, right, somebody's a music fan, I'm on I'm board. Sold. Somebody's an Ian Curtis fan and a New Order fan, I'm I'm sold. I'm sold on that, the Joy Division. With Merseyside Reds, Manchester Red, Manchester Blue, uh, <laughs> all the Pez names. Uh, yeah, so the new Champions League... Uh, so, the new format is going to see 36 clubs qualifying for an expanded first phase where all clubs will play against 10 opponents of varying strengths. This will result in a league table. So, the traditional group stage is gone. And uh, it will result in a league table with the top eight qualifying. So, the top four from each two group of 10. So, it's a group A of 10 and a group B of 10. So, the top four from each uh Sorry, no, the, yeah, the top eight. Uh, for So the top four of each group qualifying. This is confusing me now. No, the, the, mm. this says with the top eight qualifying for the knockout phase and then the next 16 going to play in the uh, playoffs. So it is it is the four teams at the top of each group. So it's eight teams that go through. So yeah. it's the, and the top four from each go to a playoff. The top four from group A, the top four from group B, and then the remaining teams playing a playoff for the final eight right. places in the last 16. Right. So if you don't finish in the top four, that means you've got even more games. That 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 You, right. you can sign to even yeah. more games. Um, yeah. And then once you get to the last 16, it plays how it how it is with the, you know, uh, the current know. format Match. when it's yeah. a knockout. I hate this. I know it's better than the Super League, and Mr. Topic is right to, to point that out on the, on Twitch. Higher, he's right to point that out uh, that it is better than the uh, than the European Super League than the Super League. Uh, but I hate it, and I don't even like the current Champions League format. I hate that as well. Um, I'd rather it go back. I, I want more variety. I was saying this on Monday. I want more variety of clubs. I don't want the same teams playing the same teams. I don't want to watch. It's why I don't watch the FA Cup bef beyond maybe the fourth or fifth round because I don't want to watch Chelsea versus Manchester United for the seventh billionth time in one season. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to watch Real Madrid versus Barcelona again. I don't want to watch Manchester United versus PSG. I'd rather watch Shakhtar Donetsk beat Real Madrid 4-2 in Madrid. I'd rather watch that game, for instance. Yeah. I'd rather watch clubs... I'd rather see clubs like Panathinaikos... Olympiakos, AEK, Rosenborg, 
Um, you know, you really, you really, Fe- really digging through the old clubs now. Vados, Spartak Moscow, uh, Shakhtar, Donetsk, Dynamo Kiev. Um, who's Dynamo a Hungarian? Zagreb. Who's the Dynamo Zagreb? Red Star Belgrade. I'd rather see a variety of different clubs. I'd rather it be the champions of Europe. The champions of Europe. The, the champions of your national league. So the Serbian champions take on the Irish champions. The Spanish champions take on the Swedish champions. The English champions take on the Russian champions. I'd rather see that. I don't like the Champions League. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Even if it went back to how it was in the 90s, where it was a much more wide variety of teams. I mean, you even had a freaking team from uh, Latvia qualify once from the Champions League in the 90s. One one year you had one team from Latvia qualify for the Champions League. Yeah. Now Latvia are not a footballing powerhouse. They've only ever qualified for one major tournament. That that was um, Europe uh, Euro two thousand and four. But it was nice to have that team in there. It was uh, yeah. it was it, you know, um, and I'm thinking who were the uh, who were the Hungarian team that um, that qualified? Who who was it? Um, I was going to say Slavia Prague, but that's not right. No, they're, that's, they're Czech, yeah, but yeah, I'd like yeah. to see them. Sparta Prague, yeah. Cluj in, um, yeah. in Romania, or, um, uh, well, they're not yeah. called, uh, uh, they're FCSB now, aren't they? They're not Stour Bucharest anymore, because they don't own the name Stour Bucharest, yeah, but they're yeah. still the same club. Um, I do, um, I was just going to say, I do hear where you're coming from in terms of variety, but I think the point of the Champions League, I'm not saying I agree with the cup format either, um, is that it's it's meant to be the the, the best you, you want to beat the be- the prestige of win the Champions League that you beat the best or best of those teams in Europe. So I agree there should be more variety in terms of like the, the earlier rounds and the and the group stages. But at the end of the day, it's always going to come down to the best clubs playing the best clubs in the later rounds. So you're always going to have those ties which you don't like watching. And that is true. And that's when I stop watching because that's when I lose complete interest in it but i would rather parts. i would rather have so also in addition to this uh rule they're going to have uh, teams that qualify not because they deserve it but because based on their previous their coefficient ranking so yeah. essentially how well they've done so if we can turn that back to the dawn of time can nottingham forest be in the champions league every single year because they've won it twice yeah. and they've won it more than arsenal and tottenham and atletico yeah. They've won it more yeah. than they've won it just the same amount as Juventus. Celtic have won it. Can we can we have them in in it every yeah. year? But the, yeah, Cause... but then if you did that, it would it would be this, as you said, same teams every year. What what if a team? What if an outside team get you know win it into the top four or the top three in whatever country, and they, they for the first time in history they managed to qualify. Their coefficient's terrible, but they managed to get qualify themselves into the top four position. They should deserve to have the chance to play in the, the next the following season Champions League. Based on on the season before, yeah. Um... So I, I I agree. We come from there should be some sort of coefficient in there. But the thing is, Nottingham Forest have you know it was the, it was the bloody early seventies when they won their two. I know. I'm just being uh, pretentious on it, but yeah, come on, yeah, like, like a, Benfica, I mean, you really Porto. Bring them back? These are teams that I um... Porto are always in it. Um, I want I want in there all the time. Ajax shouldn't have to go through a qualifier. For instance, to they really to... don't they? I mean, they win their they win their domestic league more often than not, so they will always be in it no matter what. But they still have to go through through a qualifier to to get that. They always have to play a pre preluding oh. game to get into that. They're not guaranteed their spot. Um, in the group stage, aren't they? I don't, I don't they're actually. not guaranteed. Dutch football has no automatic qualification to the to the Champions League. Oh, you I, have, thought, I think I you entered the one who done it. Did you're you're entered into the third qualifying round? I do believe. Um, Porto, uh, Portugal have an automatic, a one I think, qu- uh, automatic qualifying spot. Yeah, I mean, with, with, with Portugal, it's always it's always Porto, Sport Lisbon, and Benfica, are the three, yeah. and they they've always been historically the three teams are always been in anyway. So. Can I can I can I suggest if Real Madrid and Barcelona want more competition in La Liga that they merge with the Portuguese league and they create an Iberian Super League? There you go. We, we we've talked we've talked about this. Before, oh, we've talked and, about uh, this. That would yeah. make Real Madrid more money because they'd get bigger games against the likes of Benfica, Sporting Club de Portugal, because I'm a footballing hipster and it's not called Sporting Lisbon. 
<laughs> I watch a YouTube channel where it's literally like this channel is for hipsters that know that it's not Sporting Lisbon. It's called Sporting Club de Portugal. <laughs> What did, what did you, did you call me HITC7s, or... thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, Sporting Club de Portugal, Benfica, Porto, I, I, uh, against Barcelona, Atleti, and Real Madrid. There you go, there's your big six. And then collectively bargain for your TV rights. Don't just go, well, Real Madrid, you can take care of your TV rights. Barcelona, you can have your own TV rights. Because you want to know how the Premier League clubs made more money than La Liga. They collectively bargain for their uh, television rights, so everybody pretty much gets the same, and then based on your Premier League position. So initially, you you will get a, around what what's the Championship playoff final worth now? Three hundred million, isn't it? Yeah. So you get three hundred million just for getting promoted to the Premier League. So every club gets that money, and then you get more based on where you finish in the Premier League. So you're all guaranteed that money because every club has signed up to the Premier League who collectively negotiate their tv deals now la liga have started doing that but they've joined the game a little bit too late to uh to replace the premier league as the best league so yeah i don't like the the champions league reforms what about you callum Do, are you a fan or i mean to be honest I, I i don't want more games being played for a start i i must admit the specific details of reforms i've had a glance over i can't remember them exactly um i just know that it will be more games per season and i think there's already enough games per season um i mean jürgen klopp has spoken out against it even guardiola's against the additional yeah. fixtures i mean we i mean if you look at look at it from an english perspective you've got the league cup you've got the fa cup you've got the premier league you've got the champions league europa league uh if you're yeah. in one of those competitions you then got the uh you uefa uh, europa vanarama national league uh sorry the conference league um and uh, I'm just going to keep going with those uh, national league jokes for the blue square, the UEFA blue square bet premier. Um, <laughs> uh, but you've got all these, all these the last season, uh, next season. <laughs> <laughs> They've got all these competitions, and the fixture congestion is piling up. And I've I've said this before that footballers are just meat. That's all yeah. they are. No one cares about them. You know, uh, like. There should have been a biggest pause in the summer for the break for, between the start yeah. of the Premier before the end of last season and the, and the uh, start of this one. There wasn't. And Premier, uh, players are just meat to make money. That's all they are. And they know it. The players know it. And I, quite frankly, I'm shocked that there hasn't been a strike. I think I mean, it's going to go end, that way. At the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, as long as they're able to play football, they'll just keep doing it because it's what they want to do. It makes them money. And I think, and they're probably thinking, well, as long as the, as long as the the medical you know medical professional tells me I can play, tells me that, then I will keep playing every match I can. They want to play as much as they can, but what the 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 medical teams and the managers got to look at is that the players don't run themselves into the ground because they've got to last a season. Like play, players who play in the Europa League and Champions League in the Premier League, they're playing fifty plus matches a season, almost sixty matches a season. Like it's it's a lot of football. And if these champion if these Champions League reforms want to put more matches in because there's more teams in it, like it's it's got to be a balance act because you want to be if you want to bring more teams in, then you, of course you want the more variety because that's fair, you know, it gives all the teams a chance to get some of that Champions League money, you know. So I get that and I support that, but then you've also got to be careful of running the players into the ground in terms of their fitness and their overall health, as you said. So I think it's got to. I think the clubs of the Premier League and and, and and well, all the leagues in Europe got to come together with UEFA, and they've got to lay out clear things of look. This is what our schedule is like right now. Look, this is what our schedule is like, and they all look, put them together, and they go right. We all know we're already playing a lot of matches. What are you saying, UEFA, in response to this? That you want to add more teams in, add more matches, and more pressure, and there's gonna be more injuries. No one and, wants. and that's the thing, like, uh, uh, and going back to the Super League stuff, where I said this wasn't a victory for fans, you know, this is a victory for the status quo. Everyone's the bad guy. Uh, whether it's the six, the big six, the 12 clubs involved in the Super League, they can be your villains one week, but UEFA and FIFA are still oh, baddies. Oh, yeah, I mean... They're still money-grabbing. Yeah, uh, with Super League, no matter what all, happened, they were the bad for. guys. 
but UEFA and FIFA and the Premier League are all still the bad guys as well. Yes, absolutely. And we so we can't forget us. that. The FA as well, they're all yeah. they all want their cake. And when yeah. when when they were threatened with a slice of that cake going to somebody else, they they absolutely. Yeah. And though we as fans hated the idea of the Super League, I've we ha- we can't not campaign now against UEFA reform at UEFA and FIFA. I mean, FIFA was run by a crook for many years called Sepp Blatter, and oh, yeah. um, who ended up getting banned from the game and me- yeah. various allegations against him and i i do believe fiorentino perez the president of real madrid is cut from the same cloth as set Balata. Yep. i really do believe that and he's come out and and look he, he's like the donald trump of spain as far as i'm concerned the amount of oh, bs yeah. he's chatting at the moment he's like you, oh, you know pro- it's gonna go go you gonna forward do, you can do trump's voice on florence and, and perez i was folks. not i was not but i might do that next he's... week or something if we if we do that uh, we'll we'll get it. Uh, the legacy fans. There you go. Um, we need to make football matches sure the young people not paying attention. You want to know why young people aren't watching football? By the way, it's not true. Young people yeah. are watching football. Uh, you got yeah. to. It, it's around sixty percent the margin, and so forty percent of fans. Uh, so forty percent of young people don't watch football. Well, some of them are women that couldn't be less interested in football. And you've got to yeah. think some men also don't like football. Don't I like didn't football. like football for a long time. I found it yeah. tediously dull and boring. I only got into yeah. it because I had to for a job. Yeah. I got into football because I had to. As a kid, yeah. I hated football. I thought it was I thought it was dumb as anything. And then later on, because I had to get into it for a, for a for a job, I became a fan. Yeah. Much later yeah. on, I did not grow up a football fan. Yeah, well, Florentino Perez is that deluded where he thinks, well, we want more people interested in it. Not even taking to the fact that, as you said, some people, men and women, just aren't interested in the sport at all. So I'm thinking, hmm, what can we do to get these people watching our football? I know, like matches shorter, matches shorter. Five minute match, and in the five minute first half, it's finished Manchester United nil, Real Madrid nil. Uh, they barely <laughs> kicked a ball, and then in the second <laughs> half, they also once. barely kicked it once, and it finished nil nil. Um, they won't, <laughs> they'll, they'll have NFL style timeouts, and it'd be like, Well, we've had a kickoff. Oh, and we're going to the ad break. See you after the break. Yeah, um, yeah, th- th- yeah. An hour, hour long, uh, lo- you know, ad break in the middle with a, a, a show, or you know, in the middle, like a cheerleader, and then in the, some in the middle ask. Of the pitch. Some are, I, I like Coldplay, but somebody books Chris Martin to, to appear in the middle of yeah. it and sing some songs. Yeah. Yeah, some <laughs> but songs I know a lot, a lot of people don't like Coldplay. <laughs> oh, I like Coldplay. I like Coldplay. I'm going to be honest. I'm a yeah. Coldplay fan. That would excite me if that. You know what? I never. I actually genuinely thought watching the Super Bowl. Why don't they have an FA Cup halftime show for the FA Cup final? <laughs> why don't they have a halftime show? Give the players instead of 15 minutes, give them like half an hour. And have a freaking concert at Wembley in the middle of the FA Cup one. I think that'd be freaking awesome. Yeah, but then you'd you'd have to. <laughs> what would you do? You'd have to bring set all the equipment up and then do the show they, and then take it all apart. They do it in the hour. Super Bowl. They do it in the Super Bowl. So I mean, because that's Americans. They're just different. I, I like that. I'd like I'd like it like a mini festival in want, the middle of the FA Cup. Do you Cup want like final. an NBA franchise style? stuff like that not the league i just want a concert in the middle of the fa cup final like you know like the opening ceremony for the european championships and the closing ceremony they always have an artist before the opening like a singer songwriter yeah. before uh the, the opening yeah. and closing games i'd like yeah. that but in the fa cup half time or before the fa cup final or, or just well not after it but before the fa cup well, final or something well, i'd like is, something well, thing is well, they do general have that, entertainment they have an the have an artist come in and sing the national anthem don't they well, I, I guarantee you that more people watched the Super Bowl. There were people that watched the Super Bowl for, um, who was it, the weekend this year, than they actually cared about the Super Bowl. So if you had somebody like, Probably. somebody Probably, good yeah. for the FA Cup final, that's how you get your casual viewers. Fiorentino Perez, there you go. That's how you get your casual viewers. Don't shorten football. Just shove a, a musical act well, halfway you, through you, Will it. you go and contact Darth Sidious and you go and tell him? <laughs> Bruno Mars, will you play the El Clasico halftime show? No. <laughs> okay, maybe Cardi B it is then. Um, <laughs> has anybody got Cardi B's number? He is good. 
<laughs> let let the money flow. Let the music flow through you. <laughs> Cardi B, will you do it? Do it. Uh, anyway, let's move on. No more Champions League, no more Super League. We've spent like an hour and a half chatting about it. So let's uh, chat about... This is the week where Jose Mourinho, no one is talking about it. This, Tottenham have played a blinder. Great time and literally any literally other time, the greatest timing this, ever. This news, yeah, any other time this news would be front page news. Everyone blown up by it, but it was the perfect time just to bury bad news sort of underneath the the other news. Yeah, just hide it weird. a bit, you know. Um, look, anyone it, really cared? Everyone saw it. it was like, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I've got to, uh, I've got a blocked nose. Um, just amazing. Amazing timing, as you say, and uh, the fact that it was like on like Monday Joe he was sacked. Yeah, uh, he no was one sacked. Knows the war the back door either. Yeah, no one. Did. Well, Deli Ali did. He was the one that kicked yeah. him out, as we discussed he's the always previous on week. Place. Well, uh, bye bye, Jose. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it was, bye bye. Ali doing his wave. Here's the wave he does. <laughs> bye <Bye-bye. laughs> bye. Uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful timing, right? Daniel Levy thought, you know what? Everyone's talking about his European Super League. If I I get rid of Jose now, no one will care. And he was right. He's played a blinder. No one cared. He pulled pulled one over on on all of us. Yeah. And even on Monday when we were doing the uh, Super League show, we were were talking about... uh, um, we, we mentioned that uh, Jose Mourinho was sacked today and we're not even talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> we spent an Jose hour talking about the sacked. Super League and no and, one, and we didn't mention Jose Mourinho yeah. in depth once. Yeah, it's like, and in breaking news today, it just, just received to us now, Jose Mourinho has been sacked from his role as, as Tottenham coach. Crickets, for, you know. <laughs> yeah, crickets. On. Just crickets. Just chip, chip, chip. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. No one cared because um, everyone was outraged. But... Uh, did you think it was hard? like obviously we were chatting about this last week where we I said I didn't see him managing the club next season. I didn't see him not managing them during the League Cup final. Yeah, that was a I bit think, extreme. I think that it definitely come has come out of left field. I think I think it was always a losing an uphill battle with him. I think he was always gonna gonna go. No yeah, how good well that's he's done. Because sure. it's just it's just been a bit meh for him during his, his tenure there. But the fact that he's just gone like that does come yeah. a bit of a surprise because as I said as you said I thought we'd have to the end of the season see if they won I mean if they won the league cup you know it's a trophy first yeah, one exactly. Tottenham won in a while if they, if they get it um, first one since 2008 sure, yeah surely that's going to be some form of success for them um, yeah but now he's just gone bye bye nope. nah, no, no he's gone you know what Jose go I think it but makes my initial thought when I saw going. it, my initial thought was, is this related to the Super League thing? Like, has Jose gone, nah, I'm walking? So there was a rumour on Monday that he refused to take training because of the Super League, but apparently that yeah. has been debunked. Um, and it is oh. purely based on results. Uh, obviously, they drew two all against uh, Everton uh, before uh, Mourinho was uh, given oh, yeah. his marching orders by Mr. Levy. And uh, we kind of went through the names... The, the names being linked for the job last week. Um, oh, God. Uh, Ryan Mason has been appointed uh, caretaker manager until the uh, uh, interim head coach, I should say, gets title most, right. Most uh, of his players the, are old, on him. In the season. Uh, well, he, he played in the academy with the majority of them. So he's tw- yeah, he's, he's 29. With them. He's got like, there's like five or six he's their mate. players are all old, on him. He's, he's their friend as well. Like, he played alongside those lads. Yeah. And... Uh, he Isn't spent it? his career. He, he, um, he obviously was at Hull when he got uh, injured, but uh, yeah. has he has had some some playing experience. He was on loan at the greatest club ever in uh, 2013-2014. That's where I know him from, the greatest club north of Barcelona. Uh, lost five nil last. Last night, uh, uh, Swindon Town. He was on loan there. Is very he, good player. He He's a very good player for Swindon when he was on loan from uh, uh, to us from Tottenham. He's a very good player, and uh, you know uh, he's got this opportunity. He won't get the job permanently. He knows that. He's already said he, yeah. he knows he's not going to get it permanently. It's just about uh, expanding the CV and, and maybe going for another job. 
uh, later down the line. Maybe the Crystal Palace job, even though Frank Lampard is being linked with uh, with with that one. Um, I know. <laughs> I loved your I loved your face. It was full of like it, just ugh, no one wants that job. Weird. It's just just full of ugh. Um, but let's go back to Mourinho, who, and if you pulled that face for Lampard at, at Crystal Palace, you're going to love what the Daily Record is reporting, that Celtic have approached Jose Mourinho to be the next Celtic manager. Who's reported that? The Daily Record in Scotland. Never hears them. That just says it all, doesn't it? They are Scotland's biggest selling Scottish-only newspaper. Um, but uh, yes, Why? Celtic are, thought, have reportedly if they approached do that, Mourinho. It's the worst thing they, they could have done ever. I mean, it's it's a club that I thought uh, I thought Eddie Howe was his favourite. Like I, I he still that, is. To remember. be fair, he still is. He's four remember, to nine. Remember we said. Remember we said, and I was like, yeah, Eddie Howe. Um, yeah, he's four to nine with uh, bookmakers to, to take the job. That's Eddie Howe, not Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho is quite far down there, but apparently, um, yeah. um, he is so on the list. He is on the list. I don't see it happening. I don't see Jose taking. No. Apparently, there's also rumours that he's going to replace Edward Wood at Manchester United. <laughs> What in God's name? Who is reporting this nonsense? I love this. I love room. I love the rumor mill. I love the rumor and innuendo where you need an unhealthy dose of salt. <laughs> Not a pinch of salt, an unhealthy dose of salt. Uh, can you imagine Ed Woodward being replaced by Jose Mourinho? Jose Mourinho? Uh, he'd oh, be like, oh, no, Ole, you you you're fired because I need to replace you as manager. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, what, I, what I find funny is that if 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 Jose Mourinho ever went up to Scotland. One, he wouldn't be able to understand local people, and they wouldn't be able to understand him. Uh, he's also being linked with Wolves. No. Uh, as Nuno Espirito Santos I might mean, it would leave fit. the club. The Portuguese link would fit. Uh, then we have Newcastle as well. Oh, imagine Jose in Newcastle. And they'd love him there, there, though. With... They'd love him there, though. With, with Mike Ashley? No, not with Mike Ashley. They'd, uh, they, Newcastle fans would they, love the, love him. If they get if they get new owners, then Jose, there, but not Mike Ashley, not not no. not in a relegation battle. No, um, but they would Newcastle fans would would embrace him like like that. They just go <laughs> if they could embrace Rafa Benitez like that, they'd be like, yes, Jose, come on, um, they'd be like that. I, it's a um, types of managers. Mauricio Sarri, by the way, is the uh, favourite to be the next Tottenham manager at the moment at nine to four. Uh, Nagelsmann, who will be the next Bayern boss, is four to one, uh, and then Nuno Santo, uh, the Wolves boss, is six to one, and uh, um, yeah, that's likely. Uh, Brendan Rodgers being linked with it. I don't see that happening because why would Brendan Rodgers leave a Champions League team for in Leicester for, quite frankly, the a mediocrity ridden European Super League team in Tottenham. Um yeah. Uh, and and yeah, so quite frankly I bet why... somewhere I bet somewhere on that list um Andre Villas Bowers has been linked at some point. I, I, I don't know what odds, but somewhere on the list Andre Villas Bowers there probably Let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Because he's out he's, he's out of a job at the moment because he walked out of Marseille, didn't he? Yes he did. He did. Um let's have a look. Let's go right down the bottom. Richard Pochettino is thirty three to one. Zinder didn't sit down. It's forty to one. I'm going down. Ryan Giggs is fifty to one. What a week he's had. Let's from, not from talk prison. about it. Um, let's Imagine not talk from prison. Yeah. Um, he's accused of a few things allegedly. Uh, Tim yeah. Sherwood sixty six to one. Andre Villas Boas not on this list. He's not. <laughs> Neil Lennon seventy five to one. <laughs> that's the appointment Tottenham if you want to be less mediocre and world class there you go it's all about the ginger from <laughs> the ginger manager from the ginger from the north yes the ginger from Northern Ireland it's all about Neil Lennon um, the Ajax boss is also a serious contender for the uh, Tottenham job uh, Eric Ten Hag uh He's twelve to one at the moment. He's the fourth favorite, but uh, Nuno Santos or Sari looking. F- uh, I'm not going to count Julian Nagelsmann because he's going to end up at uh, Bayern. So I guarantee that that's happening. Four 0 It finished. 
to uh, four Burnley. Four nil. Wolverhampton Wanderers nil. Burnley four. It finished. The fourth. And, uh, Leeds United nil. Manchester United nil. Westwood with the eighty fifth minute oh. goal. That's just. That's just when like, the Wolves players are like, okay, it can't get any worse. Let's just relax. They haven't scored in a long time. Oh, what's he doing? No, don't score. Don't, don't <laughs> score. Oh, no, he scored. I mean, when, oh, we're just going to get a rollicking, aren't we? When, when you get to that point where Burnley are beating you 4-0 at home, it's, that's there's bad. nothing left for you to achieve now. Nuno Santos, oh. Santo has, uh, has achieved everything at Wolves. He's lost 4-0 to Burnley. There is nothing more to achieve. <laughs> Forget trophies. He's 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 got the ultimate one. He's lost four 0 to Burnley. Um, I like him. uh, I I do too. Uh, So, Mourinho, yes, potentially going to go and uh, man. (laughs) Jose Mourinho to Celtic confirmed. Um, Not happen. Not in a million years. uh, It's uh, you know it's uh, (laughs) definitely it's definitely not going to happen at all. Uh, in the, we've only got about fifteen minutes to go. Uh, so, we've talked about the European Super League. We talked about the Champions League reform. We've fought, talked about a fifty-plus one rule. We've talked about Jose Mourinho. We'll, we'll do the league tables. But fresh on the heels of the European Super League, and this is unlikely, as this is people at like the Sun reporting this and. And uh, Talk Sport, who are owned by the same company that own the Sun, a British Super League is in talks with Celtic and Rangers joining the Premier League potentially, and the rest of the Premier League clubs. Um, a few people have had their say on this. David Moyes loves it; he wants Celtic and Rangers in the Premier League. I mean, it, it, I mean, if you're looking at it from a purely financial point of view. Uh, the Premier League would be m- a slightly more marketable with Celtic and Rangers in it. It would add value to it because they are big clubs. Rangers are just as big a club as, say, a Newcastle lead to an Aston Villa. Celtic are a bit bigger. They're a bit bigger. They have yeah. much more global appeal than... Uh, no offence to Rangers, you're a big club, but Celtic have a bigger global appeal because there are fucking Irish people all over the fucking shop. So, uh, quite frankly, my, my ancestors, they left that. We, we all scurried away from that country and we went to the far-flung corners of the earth where there are Celtic supporters <laughs> clubs all over the place. So, I can so make these what, jokes. So, I'm Irish. So, so, basically, what you're trying to say is there's uh, all living we, relatives we, of you all around me, the world. Uh, uh, let, let me tell you, son. We are all over the world. We are all over... The Irish nation is not just... Uh, in Ireland, it's not just in Ireland. It's it's all over the world. Boston, New York, trying not to go into a Jamaican accent. <laughs> <Get out. laughs> but no, the Irish, the Irish folk uh, with with Glasgow, Dublin, Belfast. You know, we're 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 New York, we're Boston, we're LA, we're Melbourne and Sydney. We're all over the shop. We're Joe Berg, Cape Town. We're all over the shop. There, there's a. Did you a, say a Joe Berg? Joe Berg, Johannesburg, yes, Joe Berg. Joe Berg. That's what they call it. That's that's its that's its nickname, Joe Berg. We there are Celtic supporters clubs all over the world. So quite frankly, there are because there are Irish people all over the world. There are Celtic supporters clubs all over the world because it is the club of the Irish nation. Quite frankly, I grew up with Irish people. I'm a Hibs fan. They're not my club. Um, I'm a Hibs person because I can't stand the two Glasgow clubs because they, you know, I like the underdogs. Um. <laughs> I know, that's, it makes zero that's sense. Why, that's definitely why he's forced from London, isn't it? <laughs> hey, it's why I support third tier 1860 Munich, who are currently third in the three Liga in the German third division. And, uh, yeah, Celtic... Um, Celtic and Rangers, potentially. Uh, the Telegraph pointing out that it would probably be fun for a season to have Celtic and Rangers in it, but then beyond that, probably not. <laughs> probably be it'd be a unique factor. For for a season and then it would die down, but yeah. I've always been of the opinion. So I'm I I think we disagree on this because I would love to have Celtic and Rangers in the English football pyramid. I've always been that way inclined, and I would go the whole hog and I would just absorb all the big Scottish clubs. So Cel- Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, Hibs, Dundee United, Aberdeen, maybe even Dundee, 
uh, bring them all in. Bring them all in because, quite frankly, they can make more money in the English for, in the English leagues. Celtic and Rangers wouldn't be guaranteed um, trophies every season, but they'd get more money. They'd get more money to start with being in the Premier League. And quite frankly, with their supporter bases, and the argument has always been the Celtic team and the, the Celtic squad and the, the Rangers squad would never be able to compete in the Premier League. I completely agree with you. But give them 300 million quid, the, 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 the size of those clubs, they'll be able to attract the players that will easily keep them in, in the Premier League. Okay, yeah, maybe them too. What about the others that you... you think oh, Hearts and Hibs are championship clubs, let's face it. Um, <laughs> I'm under no right. illusions there. They're championship clubs. Um, they, they, get, they get put in the Premier League, they get relegated. Um, but Celtic and Rangers, they, they would add market value to the Premier League. I guarantee it. They would add so much mar- market value. Uh, the, the problem is that I, I said it on Monday quite controversially. I think Celtic are as big a club as Manchester United. I think they genuinely are. In, in what sense? Um, they're just a massive club. You, I think people underestimate the size of, of Celtic. They, they bring in nowhere near not the same amount of money. But if they were in the same league, they would. Not I guarantee it. I guarantee it. It'd take a while. It'd take a while. For them to yeah, but they would. Level. They'd get to that stage. They'd get to that stage. Yeah, but how long would that take? I reckon about five years. No, Parkhead is one of the biggest stadiums in the country. You've got to remember that. They've got mama, they, they're a massive city club. Celtic would be a top four club. They would they would be competing against Liverpool, Manchester United, Arsenal, Everton, Tottenham for a Champions League spot. I guarantee it. Rangers probably another Everton. Europa League maybe occasionally. Uh, Champions League, but Celtic could easily, easily be another Leicester in that they would be finishing third. Maybe, maybe they'd fluke a title, but I guarantee you that Celtic would be competing for. Give them five years in the Premier League, they'd be they'd be a top four team because they're just so big a club that it, they can't fail. But is it is it ever going to happen? No, it's never going to happen. So we're just wasting our time, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> you're wasting your time. I'm not saying anything. You're not saying anything. You're, I'm you're just you're just making me look like a tit. <laughs> just yeah. making me look like a tit. Uh yes. Uh I, I I just I want Celtic. I want I want Celtic more than I want Rangers in the Premier League. I want Celtic in the Premier League. And quite frankly, when Rangers went bankrupt and got kicked out of the Scottish Premiership to um um League Scottish League Two. I, at that point, I'd have just gone. You know what? Nah, we'll we'll go join the National League in in England and try and work our way up the English football pyramid because there's more money in it. Uh, Scion zero two four says Chelsea won. Yes, they did. Um, we talked about it earlier. Uh, we disagree with the red card that West Ham got. Uh, but uh, I disagree. Manchester United is a way bigger club than Celtic. Yeah, but give them time. Give Celtic time. People, und- I, I'm firm on this. I'm old firm on this. Oh, God, no. That's oh, terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. That's... Shut up. <laughs> I'm firm on this. Celtic would be a top four club. They would be a tro- They could win trophies in English. In, in English? In England? Because I can't speak English. Uh, they would win trophies in England. I guarantee it. Celtic are a massive club. They are a massive club. The old firm derby would be the biggest derby in the Premier League. That kind of intense rivalry is unlike anything we have in the Premier League. That would be a marquee match. That would be the match for the Premier. It's the match of it's the biggest game outside the Premier League. Forget El Clasico. The Old Firm is the biggest game outside the Premier League, and I would rather have that game, that match in the Premier League. Okay, yes, we'll have to do something about the uh, Rangers and Celtic fans beating the ever-loving crap out of each other. Yeah, um, so it's like the outright hatred between them. Yes, uh, much like it is when whenever Newcastle uh, face Sunderland. I'd, I'd say, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say the closest thing got the old firm is either. I mean, Merseyside derby or yeah, but the, there's a key difference. The there's a key difference in the Merseyside derby because. You have family members that are Everton fans, or you have family members that are Liverpool yeah. fans. In the old firm, it's, it's you the do same. not have that. 
No, you do no. not have family members that are that are Celtic and Rangers fans. I have a uh, my cousin who is a Celtic fan will not work alongside a Rangers fan. Like the, he outwardly refuses and has spoken to his management, his boss, and said, "If he's a Rangers fan, I can't work with him." That is the hatred. That's that I mean, hatred. That, that sounds because you've got the less, you've got the. That sounds less. That sounds less like you know competitive <laughs> football rivalry and more and that, like real like pettiness. Well, it, it's hatred. It's a hatred because you got the. It's, it's if, if I if I bring it down to a base level, you got the proddies on one side, the Catholics on the other. You got the Irish and the British. Yeah, but that but that's the same. That's the same with Liverpool, Everton, Protestants and Catholics in the system of Liverpool, where it used to be anyway. Yeah, but that's diluted. That's died down. But in Glasgow, it's still the same. So you'd see the group. Yeah, if you go to, buddy, there's a lot more buddy alcohol bleeding. Rate, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to offend. Like rounds. I'm not trying to offend the uh, Glaswegian people, but you know, you go to a you go to an old firm match, you see Union Union Jacks all over the place at the Rangers um, end, and then you see green, white, and gold for Celtic. It is a it, it's it's Ireland versus Britain, effectively that match. It, it's I, I you know I think it's the biggest match in the world, but uh, you know, uh, and if it were in the Premier League, it would make. It would make a lot of money. It would make a lot of money. And now I sound like FSG or, or the Glazers. Yeah, you or, You're talking oh, about the money. You're talking about the money. Just the I'm money. T- I, I want Celtic to have that money. I want Celtic to have the money. I want... I know it won't, but I want it to happen. I will it in. Will it well, just, to happen. Just just, just, just <laughs> shout at the top of your voice going, I want it to happen. It's not going to change anything. No. No. I beca- is, oh, my God. I just top... realised I've become Fiorentino oh. Perez. That's what you have, yeah. <laughs> Just, just <laughs> petulantly, just you know, swinging your fist round the top of you and, and, and squealing. You have signed a like binding eight. contract. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the yeah, way, that binding contract. Like now, yeah. uh, we didn't mention this earlier. That binding contract, eight point three million pounds. Apparently, it's going to cost the uh, six Premier yeah. League clubs. Uh, so, uh, yes. Okay. Yes, we know yeah. it's not going to happen. Okay. Can't a guy yeah. dream? <laughs> I just oh. want a dream. Uh, Celtic oh. in the Premier League, definitely going to happen. Like Sol Campbell oh. becoming Tottenham manager. <laughs> definitely based in reality. Um, but yeah, it's been the talk of of the uh, of the town. And uh, let's be honest, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, despite... I, I, I just love it. We've gone from European Super League, Champions League reform to British Super League. No, and, and quite frankly, if you're going to add Celtic and Rangers and you're calling it a British Super League, it's not really a British Super League. It's an English and Scottish Super League because, you know, yeah. Linfield are still playing in Belfast. And what do you want? The new Saints? What is it? Total Network Solutions, as they used to be called. <laughs> and they're dancing in the streets of Total Network Solutions. That is my favourite Soccer Saturday joke. No. I I personally think no matter how much money to bring in that the top six in the Premier League don't want Rangers and Celtic in there because they'd be a threat. No, they wouldn't. Um, okay, we're we're done. Um, we're do- we're done. We're nearly at th- three o'clock. Let's go through the table. Science says no offense, but you've got to support a bigger bigger club to have bigger dreams like that. What do you mean by that? <laughs> wow, wow. No, that's that's ne- <laughs> that's nearly blocked. Ah, out. No, that's Ouch. that's a that's a burn. Could I? I'm gonna to go to the um to the hospital after this. Yeah, I know. Get get some Savlon get some, for that get burn. Some, get some bandy on that. Get yeah. some Savlon for that burn. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I wouldn't block. Well, let, let's, let's 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 agree to disagree on it. Yes, to let's agree, see, let's that, agree uh, to disagree on this. So, so, so in the time, um, you know, you know. Oh no, we know we we we're, we're crap. He says you're welcome. <laughs> Good job, mate. Good. Uh, yeah. Well, you've made him happy. You've you've made you've made Callum happy. That's what you've done. And I can confirm after that horrible burn that I will be okay for next Saturday, 7 p.m. Twitch.tv forward slash the football fan show. Just because I'm not a, a glory hunter, I support the team of my own town. Thank you, Zion024 on Twitch for, for that absolute, to be fair, the amount of, uh, to be fair, You've, lo- you've listened to the podcast. The amount of shit I was talking about Celtic being bigger than Manchester United. Maybe I kind of deserved it. Uh, <laughs> come call me an idiot on twitch.tv forward slash the football fan show next Saturday, 7pm. Um, 
Check us out on social media as well. We're on facebook.com forward slash the football fan show. Uh, you can email us anytime you like uh, the football fan show at gmail.com. Any thoughts, opinions on what we do? If you want to say that I'm a deluded fool, you can do that. Uh, the football fan show at gmail.com. Although, to be honest, if you abuse me, I'm probably just going to mark you as junk. Uh, check out our website, deadair.media forward slash the football fan show. Delighted to be a part of the Dead Air Media family uh, of uh, channels and on our on their main channel, I should say. Uh, Dead Air Media, twitch.tv forward slash Dead Air Media. I do a chat show Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. It's called Chat Along Live, except on Fridays where it's Quiz Along Live and it's Quiz of the Week, uh, primarily UK focus. So go check us out there. You can watch highlights and clips on our YouTube channel. Just search the Football Fan Show Live. By the way, the full stream goes live on YouTube 24 hours after the broadcast as per the rules of Twitch. And, of course, we have got our new Instagram page. Uh, we're at the Football Fan Show on Instagram and TikTok.com forward slash at the Football Fan Show on TikTok. Uh, in on Instagram, you can see uh, highlights of the shows and the full live special that we did on the European Super League on IGTV. It's just under an hour long, slightly edited, just to bring it under the hour, but none of the content is taken out of it. All the speech is there, it's just the break that we had in it that's been taken out. And TikTok, we put our funniest clips. You can also go watch me cry into a scarf. Um, when uh, MK Dons were beating my team Swindon Town by four goals to nil. You can also see the football news in 60 seconds or less. That's on TikTok and Instagram as well. Thank you for joining us this week and you have a fabulous week. Don't forget 7pm next Saturday, twitch.tv forward slash the football fan show. Go check us out there. We've got a schedule of different shows. Please check us out there. And thank you for listening to the podcast and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>